Hey there, my name is Chris. Thanks for watching. For me, the number one NFL surprise of 2019 isn't quite Lamar Jackson, though what a revelation he's been. No, it is the utter collapse of the Rams. Think about it. Back in August, in fantasy football, this is what we were doing with our Rams. Their top five skill weapons were locked in fantasy starters because, of course, they were. Because there was no way, after two years of laying waste to the NFL, the LA Rams weren't going to feature one of the best offenses in the league. Gurley was the number nine running back off the board. He's number 15 in standard fantasy leagues through week 12, but it's been a bad ride. Cooks is the number 63 wide receiver, having missed most of three games. Woods is number 33 with one touchdown. Flag player Cooper Cup, okay, he's number 10 among wide receivers, which is great, except last three weeks combined, he's got nine fantasy points. And Jared Goff so far is the QB 22, and the world has decided he's totally incompetent. The world is dumb and judges things only by stats. None of these five players have changed. What's changed is the offensive line. The focus of this video will be the effect the offensive line has had on Gurley. But suffice it to say, while I was never a believer in Jared Goff as a great NFL player, by far the biggest problem for him this year has also been a lack of consistent protection. Has he made dumb throws when he had time? Sure. I mean, quarterbacks do that sometimes. Has he seen ghosts even when the line has done its job? Because he's been shell-shocked into having to hurry? Yes, indeed. Mostly, the entire passing game has had to be reshaped because Goff has had so much pressure, especially in his face, so quickly, to where the ball has to be out quicker and the downfield passing just has not worked as well. But I'm here to talk about the running, and as everyone always says about the Rams' offense, everything they did in 2017 and 2018 keyed off the run game, and specifically it keyed off the zone running game. So I don't mean to patronize anybody here, but I just figured we'd do a quick refresher on what we mean when we say zone runs. This is the true staple of what made Sean McVay's system great for two years, the outside zone run. When it works, the outside zone is hard to defend because it gives a running back flexibility. At the snap, this is from 2018, you will see every Rams offensive lineman stand up and sprint left. That's the hallmark of outside zone. And as they run, they evaluate how they're being defended and how best to create a lane. In this case, the left guard is able to get a reach block to seal a linebacker, while the left tackle can't, so he pushes his man further to the sideline, and Todd Gurley does the rest. It creates a lane. This is the Shanahan system. This is the one-cut system we hear so much about, and it's hard to defend because it's not really a set play. It lets the running back pick and choose, plus you can then build so much misdirection and play action off this base play to create more havoc and wide-open receivers down the field. And while it isn't quite as much the Rams' signature run play inside zone, also could be big for them last year, the key here will be watch left tackle Andrew Whitworth. He's on the outside shoulder of a defensive end, but his job will be to get around him to the inside to seal him off while the left guard joins the rest of the linemen firing out to the right. A wham block from number 89, Tyler Higby, helps seal the cutback lane. Gurley shows the right patience, cuts, sees a huge lane, and he's gone for a 35-yard score. Okay, when we come back, we'll take a look at what these plays have mostly looked like in 2019 and how the Rams have tried to account for it. It's gift-giving time, but what about a gift for yourself? The gift of an Audible membership. For a limited time, Audible's offering more than half off your first three months. Every month, you can choose one audiobook and two Audible originals. And when you start your new account, they'll give you an audiobook and two Audible originals for free. And you know what? I have novels on Audible. If you make one of my books your free audiobook, then send me a screen cap. You'll be a person of the book. You'll be in our Sunday morning live stream. You can ask me lineup questions about your fantasy playoff game for free every Sunday morning. Visit audible.com slash Harris Tube or text Harris Tube to 500500. Get one of my books as your free audiobook and become a person of the book. Audible.com slash Harris Tube or text Harris Tube to 500500. 
Okay, back at it looking at Todd Gurley and his line. This is 2019, and the play should look familiar. It's outside zone. All the linemen are going to sprint left. It's going to be up to Gurley to improvise. As we get going, watch number 73, David Edwards, and number 77, Andrew Whitworth. Edwards, the left guard, actually does his job, gets to the second level, gets his seal. But let's rewind, and we'll watch Whitworth from the beginning. If we pause it right here, well, it looks like the play has worked. Whitworth has his man sealed to the outside. This is going to be the same result as the touchdown we just showed you a couple of minutes ago against Seattle. But no, as Gurley hits the hole that's supposed to be there, Whitworth has lost leverage. He gets turned around and the hole is plugged. This third and short play is stuffed. But oh yeah, Todd Gurley is the one who sucks. That breakdown, pretty typical, but also typical is this defense that the Rams have been seeing. If you've watched any Rams broadcasts, except the ones that Booger McFarland is on, you hear announcers talk about defenses putting six men across, basically plugging every gap. Count up the Saints here. One, two, three, four, five, six. The Rams try outside zone here, but now in addition to linebackers standing there guarding possible cutback lanes, you also have a hat on a hat. No extra offensive linemen. Everyone is attacked man-on-man, and that means cutback lanes are way more scarce. I mean, even when the Rams line was good last year, this was a tactic that smart defenses started using later in the year. First the Lions and the Bears in the regular season, and then the Patriots really laid down the blueprint in the Super Bowl. It is simply a lot harder to run outside zone when you have to account for so many bodies so close to the line. Add into the mix the fact that the offensive linemen themselves have played way worse this year and that there are just way more blown assignments in general, it starts to be a real mess. So now we are back in 2019 again, and it doesn't really matter what scheme you're running. When So take a look at number 66, Austin Blythe, as we begin this play. I mean, if you're just going to let the linebacker charge right through the hole to blow up the play, scheme doesn't matter. Oh, but right. Todd Gurley's the one who's bad. How about this one? Again, don't pay attention to scheme. Watch number 70, Joe Noteboom. We're asking a lot of him to reach block all the way to the nose tackle, so maybe you want to blame him, or maybe you want to blame bad communication with the center, Brian Allen. Either way, if you'd like to tell me what Gurley's supposed to do here, I'm all ears. Or how about if everyone just wants to decide to lose their man-to-man matchups all at once? That would be great, too. Here, both Tyler Higby and Andrew Whitworth can't beat their men. Really, it's Higby getting pile-driven back by a defensive end. But again, the scheme doesn't matter. It's bad blocking. And listen, you can't scheme your way out of bad blocking. But scheme-wise, the Rams are trying to respond. So let's talk about how they've tried to get back to productivity on the ground. The past few weeks, they've just cut way back on zone. This is a way more old-fashioned form of blocking. They used it against the Steelers Week 10 and especially the Bears Week 11. Double team the three down linemen and blow them forward. Stay in place. Don't be on the move. Reduce the variables. Just try and get a stalemate and push them back. And then Higby on the edge there needs to win against Khalil Mack, which we just saw can be a dicey proposition, but this time it works. Yeah, it's just an entirely different approach. You'll see it again here, double teams for every down lineman. The idea isn't really to get anything moving side to side. It's just to push the mothers back as much as you can. So then at least your all world running back has a chance to gather himself, get a little room, make a play. And that kind of play doesn't only have to wind up going up the middle because when you stymie the line and the linebackers aren't pressed way forward, it can give your running back a chance to create and cut to the outside and get a big gain. The Rams certainly found something and basically ran far fewer zone plays in week 11. But there are limitations here. This is why zone runs became a thing in the first place, because if a defense puts its mind to stopping the power running game, often it can, because the blocking will tell you where the running back is going. Watch number 58, Roquan Smith. He reads the blocking just as well as Gurley does. And now it's after halftime of this game, and the Bears have decided, let's make an adjustment. Let's start bringing our guys forward at linebacker. It leads to Smith clogging the hole. It just becomes easier for a defense to puzzle out. 
You can just run blitz some of the time. You can take number 39, Eddie Jackson. You can have him up there to overload and foil the double teams. And the power running game that worked for a while, a couple of weeks ago, there are tried and true methods to defend it. This is one example of it. You know, if the people executing the blocking on a power running game aren't good, it's not going to fool anybody. They're going to get swarmed under. And then as the game goes along, you get desperate and you go back to inside zone and it just flat out doesn't work because it's just really, really difficult to scheme yourself out of an offensive line that can't block very well. This has been a calamitous crash to earth for LA's offense. And the single biggest factor is not Todd Gurley's knee or his workload. It's not even Jared Goff suddenly being terrible. The biggest change on film is very clearly that the Rams blocking system has cratered. And that is scary. It's hard to see them turning it around the rest of 2019 and even being competent. We're locked into using Gurley in our fantasy playoffs. That's not really even the question but it can probably only go so well for him the rest of the season. And as for the other skill weapons, I don't know, maybe it does get better this week against an Arizona defense that's not all that good. But generally speaking, the bottom has fallen out. Thanks so much for watching. Please, please, please smash that like button. Write a comment. Tell us who else you'd like to see us review film on. And of course, best of all, please subscribe to our channel and then click that little bell above the subscribe button and you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. 